On the line with us for the hour is Congressman Mark Pocan taking your calls and David in Woodland Hills, California, listening on Sirius XM. You're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Thank you, Guru. Um, I have a question for the Democrats to ask Judge Gorsuch. Knowing that several outgoing presidents, including Ronald Reagan, had their Supreme Court nominees affirmed by the Senate, do you think it's a good thing for democracy and for the two-party system that the Republicans refuse to even hold hearings on Barack Obama's choice for the Supreme Court, Merritt Garland? Was David was uh, uh, forgive my interrupting here, but was was Reagan's appointee done in his last year? Yes, we we spoke about this before. They changed it on WikiLeaks to two years before, and then they had to change it back. It was one year before. Interesting. It was the full one year, but it was yeah. one year. Yeah. Thank you, David. Congressman? Well, David, that question has certainly been raised by Democrats. Whether or not, I, I don't know if they've actually asked that in the confirmation process or not. I know they had some pretty aggressive questioning yesterday. Uh, but you're right. That's a fair question. I'd like to know where uh, someone who's about to be on the Supreme Court, what they think about uh, what they did in that last year and holding back a nomination that long. Uh, it'd be great insight into how uh, he's going to be and how independent he would be. Rick in Wilmette, Illinois, listening to WCPT. Rick, you're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Hi. I just wanted to propose a word change in response to the Republican uh, vocabulary on health care. I continue to hear the uh, speaker use the word choice and that the uh, proposal offers the word choice um, to all Americans. I'd like to propose that every time they use the word choice, we substitute the word confusion because that is what uh, health care provide presents to us um, whenever we try to access health insurance you mean yeah health insurance that's what health insurance provides to us um, I spoke to uh, uh, someone I know who is uh, confronting um, surgery and is utterly confused by the the options that she has in the uh, insurance market. Yeah. Congressman. No, Rick, I, I think um, you, know, you make a strong point. I mean, part of our, our problem is I rewatched the Paul Ryan presentation, his little rolled up sleeves uh, PowerPoint presentation. And, you know, you would think he was talking about a completely different document than the Congressional Budget Office scored because uh, everything he said from the choice discussion to, you know, less costs in healthcare and all the rest is completely, you know, in bizarro land, right? It's the opposite of what's true. Uh, what I think we're learning more and more is it's not just that older Americans are going to pay more. And in fact, in some cases, if you're a 62-year-old uh, farmer from Janesville, Wisconsin, which is in Speaker Ryan's district in, in the county that, that he and I share, you're making 26000 a year. Your health insurance could go up to your portion is $14,000 from a current 1700 That's a 750% increase uh, out of this bill. So healthcare is certainly not more affordable. 24 million people are getting dumped off of it. So it's certainly not more accessible. And in the end, uh, what they don't really want to talk about, and I, I think we need to talk about a lot more, is the $600 billion that they're transferring, um, half of it alone to the top uh, 2%. And, and then the rest goes to insurance companies and big pharma and, and medical device uh, company. So, you know, this is really what Paul Ryan's about, right? Tax reform. And I think what I'm finding is this really is a Trojan horse. Uh, they're telling us it's health care. And in, in the reality, it's the exact opposite because it's taking health care away from people. But then it slides in these giant tax cuts. They're just the beginning of this whole process of tax reform to make it so that we're uh, giving uh, money that would come from the middle class and those aspiring to be in the middle class and goes on up. Darcy in West Palm Beach, Florida. You're on the air with Congressman Pocan. I'm really grateful to both of you. My question is, do you think we'll be able to handle the threat from North Korea with everything that's going on? Yeah, hi, Dar Darcy. Thank you for that question. I'll tell you, you know, and this isn't a, I, I usually try to give more positive answers, but I'll tell you, if there's one thing I worry about the most uh, with Donald Trump is that he gets up at 4.30 in the morning or five in the morning, sends out a 140 character tweet because you get the information often when I do when we get this tweet the same time. And he says something that, you know, sets off Kim Jong-un or someone else and we have an international incident. It's pretty hard to put that genie back in the bottle. And, you know, right now they're doing a lot of tough talk 
uh, from a guy who's got zero experience in this area. And, you know, he wants to be seen as tough. He wants to beef up the military, uh, $54 billion at the expense of everything else. Um, this is a scary scenario for someone to have such little experience, but such a huge ego and such a fragile ego. Uh, you know, th those are the things they worry about the most. So, you know, while I think there are plenty of good people, honestly, in both parties who don't, you know, want us to get into a situation uh, in North Korea, I worry that, you know, as commander in chief, he's got some unique potential to cause serious problems. Yeah. Bob in Oceanside, New York, uh, listening on Sirius XM. Bob, we got about a minute and a half before the break. Quick question for the congressman. Bob? Okay, let's try Rich, listening on Sirius, on Sirius and Cedro Woolley. Same, same, same instructions, Rich. Congressman, I've been of the opinion for several years now that the war on drugs is actually a gun running operation, the third world despots and a boondoggle for the arms industry. How true is that? Can we get the program audited? And can we redomesticize some of those funds for education and treatment? Thank you. It's a lot in the amount of time, but let me say this. I, I, I agree with you. I think our drug war has largely failed this country on multiple fronts. I was just meeting with uh, the president of Honduras where we were questioning him on some human rights violations for people internally in the country. And his answer came back that there's all these drug dealers and even the Catholic church is involved in drug dealing. And it's of course, because they're trying to get a bunch of funds from the U.S. government, and you know, I think often uh, we use the DEA to be a piggy bank for a whole lot of other operations uh, that go into uh, other areas militarily. So there's plenty of reasons why we need to have a complete uh, rethinking of the war on drugs. So it's even spread beyond our borders, where we've inflicted our war on drugs in our to our south, central and so, southern neighbors. Yeah, you know, when I asked a question uh, about Berta Caceres, who who was killed. Uh, and other activists have been killed in Honduras and directly about an independent investigation. I got this long answer back uh, about, you know, the drug dealing priests, um, which it didn't exactly answer my question. And we and made sure that at least he knows we're watching this. Uh, but more importantly is this is how they justify money. And we had Republicans in the room and they often say, yeah, yeah, you need money for this. And in reality, I think they're using it for a lot of other purposes, including uh, pressures on their own people. So the drug war gets to use the excuse for a lot of things. Amazing. Congressman Mark Pocan with us for the hour. Stick around. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-808-9925. His website, pocan.house.gov. You can tweet him at rep as in representative, rep Mark, M-A-R-K, Pocan, P-O-C-A-N, rep Mark Pocan.